on their own personal experiences. For me, it actually happened to me when I stopped caring, I think when I actually got to LA. Um, prior to that, I was from a small town outside of San Francisco, and it was very much, you know, like a, a small town where everyone knows each other, you know who the popular kids are, what to do and what not to do, what circles to hang in, so on and so on. But when I got to LA, I knew I was by myself, I knew I had nobody, so I knew I had to be okay with me first. I'm not saying I don't ever get insecure and I don't have fears at all. But I knew by the time I got to LA, I had to be 85% clear because I was in a world where no one knew me, no one would care about me, and they, everyone was just like sharks trying to get the same dream. So at that point, I had to just take a stand for myself and say, you know what, I have to make it and I can't worry about what people say. Because had I worried about what people thought about me, I don't think I'd be even right here, right now in front of you because it was those things, those breaking down rules, almost being a little unconventional, that got me here. Anybody else? I just feel like once you allow, if you allow those fears to take control of you, your insecurities to take control of you, when you're auditioning, you say you're in musical theater, when, you audi when you're auditioning, your choreographers and your casting directors, they can see, they can smell an insecurity. So once you uh, not allow those to take over you, control over you, and you're like going out there confident, then it reads to whoever you're auditioning for, your casting director, and then you can begin to feel your, your destiny starting to like flourish. So really just let them go. Um, okay, so finding an agency is what you're asking me. And how do you, uh, what's your background in dance? What do you love? I would say hip hop. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you can do it two ways. Okay. You can actually go to a party somewhere. Let me just put the two sentences. Number one, if an agency is holding a casting to cast for themselves, definitely go to that. They're going to have some of their choreographers, choreographers from their agency, you know, basically hold an audition. There's one way. Another way, which is the way I did, and, it's, and again, it's about figuring it out and breaking rules, and you have to. So for me, I did that. I went to the agency, gave my old video to my mind of me dancing in the studio. They were just like, yeah, we like you, but we gotta see you take a class. We have to see you, you know, in another type of dancing environment, not your own. I said, okay, great. So then, there was an audition. I had no agent, I heard about it. I went, I showed up, I booked the job. I had a headshot, I put my name, my number, and then I put the agency's number and name that I wanted to be at below mine. And, <laughs> and next thing I know, I got a job and an agent. So what I'm saying is that if you try in a way where they don't see you, then you have to make them see you. And it might be through another way. That's all. And then your second part is what do you do when you get there? Is uh, So it all depends. There's different choreographers looking for different things. I would first of all find out who the choreographer is. And then once they tell you that, what type of things have they done? Scroll through their resume, find out, you know, watch videos, go on YouTube, look at stage shows, see what kind of their style or their type of artist is. If they tell you the type of artist it is, then look at that type of artist. Look at the artist and look at what they've been doing. From there, that should tell you kind of the style to come in while still making it your own and how you should move. For instance, when I auditioned for Lady Gaga, you know, some kids who've been watching her from start until now understand the language, the body language, the outfits, you know, the, the artists. Because even for the dancers that I pick, and whether it's Gaga or anyone else, I always want stars. I never want artists in dance. It always even looks like that. It looks like so and so and some dancers she barely knows. I like artists and stars, or artists and a cast people who all know the artists, who can bump into the artist and not to feel like dun dun dun. You got what I'm saying? Because you can watch the performance and sense that he doesn't even know who that is behind him. Energy. So once you figure out those things, then you come to the audition you, and you, you have to perform appropriately. Many, when I auditioned for Gaga, some kids came in there with like hoodies, baggy jeans. I told them to freestyle. They were popping and rocking the paparazzi. I don't know. <laughs> Has anybody heard paparazzi? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so why you be popping and locking and doing tricks? That's for an usher audition. So what I'm saying is that you have, to, now you have to go into the game knowing what kind of game to play. And then that's the best way, just on a very basic, basic level, to work a job. You have to, then you have to just go in there and really perform. You've got to perform. You've got to stress the choreography. You've got to make it come to life. Because what happens is that a choreographer just is going to just give you the steps. They're not going to tell you how to feel, how to attack it, the approach, the mindset. That's just something you have to figure out. 
Because once you can figure all that out, and I just gave it to you now, and in an hour you gave me all of that, you're booked. Easily. Because that's one less problem I have to worry about. Because what people don't understand is that as a choreographer, it's so much bigger than steps. Oh my gosh. Anybody in this room can make up steps. Anybody in this room can make up steps. It is not about the steps. It is about, number one, the artist and what they need. And then after that, there's a whole business set. You have to know the difference between stage performance, video performance, tour performing, commercial performing. They are so different, and the business that comes along with it. Those are things you have to worry about. The steps, anybody can make up, but it's how you make them up and what you do with the person you're doing them for is the difference. But no one knows that because there's so many TV shows these days. You have access to everything on YouTube. So everyone's a dancer, and everyone's a choreographer, and they want to get there so fast. And I can make up steps too. I'm a choreographer. No, you're not. Because you should first dance. You, whoever wants to be a professional dancer in this room should dance for as long as they can. You get on every video, every commercial, every tour, and you dance into your life. Your spirit is calling. Not because you need a check. There's the difference. A lot of people are teaching and sending their choreographers because they need to make money. Not because they've learned and trained in the craft. Does that make sense out there? I'm not knocking anybody, but what I'm saying is that what's happened is, and then I'll move on, is a lot of these kids aren't working as dancers. They're not getting jobs as dancers. So they get into someone's ear at a studio and say, well, I can make up steps, and I've got friends who come to my class. So then what happens is that all these people start going to, let's just say, not that Alvin Ailey's doing it, Alvin Ailey, for instance, and people are going to take classes and thinking that if you're teaching to Alvin Ailey, you must be amazing, right? But what they're doing is they're learning bad information from someone who's never even worked as a dancer. And I'm not talking about one video. I'm talking about videos, tours, commercials. Then they should be teaching and educating, not because they can make up steps. There's a total difference. So everyone just know the difference when you're going to these dance classes, look, at the choreographer's or instructor's resume, please. And let it have more than one or two videos or one name. One name is not enough. That's easy. It should have names <laughs> and of different types of people. Okay? Just trying to educate you. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> Eight minimum for the tour, and then who knows how long that'll go. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me ask you this. What makes you nervous? Uh, just like going into a room where all these people are judging you. Okay. <laughs> well, I think the most plain, simple ways to say this is that if you want to be a professional dancer, you've got to get over that part. Because everyone's going to judge you, even after the audition. That's the actually smallest part of it. Yeah. It's when you actually get on stage and you're going to be performing live in front of anyone. That's the bigger judgment. So you have to just tell yourself, this is actually the baby step. This is actually the, the bottom of the totem pole. Because the thing about it is, if this is what you really want to do, you've got to get over that. Uh, there's certain things that I used to do. I used to just be like, don't. And this is, listen, everyone's different. At first, I didn't look them in the eye. That took me a minute. I would look through them. I would look above them. That's not always good, but I'm just telling you a real moment that I used to have. It took me a while to be able to look in someone's eyes and perform. Once I got past that and I got my confidence in myself, I just said, forget it. If they, if they want me, they want me. Because if someone's going to say no and it's okay, you will get a yes, but you have to realize that it's just a no. You have to just tell yourself, I hate to say that it's not that deep, and I know in that moment it's everything. And it was everything to me too. But I had to tell myself, those people over there, just as we are, we are all human. And they're going to have their opinion of you, but it might not be the last no. But you have to still be able, you have to be able okay with yourself to walk in the room and not worry about the fear. Don't let the fear get you. Because that is the smallest part, I swear. After the audition and you get the job, these kids can tell you. <laughs> that's where the real work and maybe the fear and the judgment comes. Because now they have to get on stage in front of 60,000 people and perform without missing one step. Or this, that, <laughs> and anything else that can film and show somewhere will show up with comments. Okay, so you just got, you got to get past that. Don't worry about them. That's the bottom of the total pole. Okay, I know it's going to be hard, but trust me. You'll be, you'll be okay, trust me. All right, next. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, well, I come from a predominantly ballet background. Okay. And there's always this sense of like, if you're not here, here you're not like 
good enough to be a professional and like I love dancing so so much and I just that's what I want to do with my life. And okay. I guess I'm just wondering like how do you know when you've reached that point where you can become a professional like when you cross over from a student to doing what you guys do? For me, and anybody got to tell me please, um, you're not going to know. It's a, um, it's a, I didn't feel professional until I started to get into those professional rooms. There wasn't something that said, you're professional. It was because from there I went to the auditions, I would get the job, and then I was now in rehearsals with all these great artists or on commercial sets, and I was just there. There's no one thing. What happens is that you're going to learn that about yourself and know that professionalism once you're in a professional role where things are going to have to happen without people telling you. For instance, when an artist comes into a room, you're not up talking loud, cracking jokes. When a choreographer's in a room, you're never, ever in life have to sing other people's choreography. You're never in the corner doing something from another classroom. That's just, but though, that's in the unwritten handbook. When a choreographer speaks, you don't talk. When a client walks in, you're quiet because the choreographer gets with the client and they do with you. Those are things you get to deal with. When you are rehearsing in a, in a professional room, you only work on the routine, and you work hard on that routine. And I, I would rather walk into a room seeing my nephew working on the routine than either working on someone else's choreography or just sitting there. It just, you build that professionalism. It's more of a state of mind and an execution, not only of your dance style, but of a mental execution that kind of tells you, okay, I'm professional. So there's no one moment you have to just, it's like getting those roads. You'll know. You guys need to chime or you guys there? Does anybody? <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm a dancer here in New York City, and I'm currently in the musical dancing, but I'm looking to transfer and to try to make it out in LA. What kind of advice do you have just to make the transition out there? And um, what new products do you have working out right now? She brought the bar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, yes, yes, go ahead. Um, so to make that trend, how old are you if you don't mind me asking? 23. So you have to just, I really don't want to get into your finances. You have to save some money. Okay, I only went out there with $1,000, but that was in like 99. Yeah. So save the money, amount of money that's comfortable for you. Find somewhere to live that either whether it's staying with somebody or staying like, you know, North Hollywood is just dancer town because every new dancer that's up there moves to North Hollywood because all the rehearsal studios are there. It's an easier move that way. Uh, if you don't have a car, it's easier. I made my own sacrifice and did not have a car for five years on purpose in a city that needs cars. Because that's what I've been told, that you need a car and everything. You do, but you don't. I mean, <laughs> it if work. it's going to make your finances go cloop, 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 yeah. then don't do it. As long as I had a roof over my head, I was fine. Um, and once you move out there, again, if you have an agency, you have an agency. I'm with Okay, oh, then perfect. Then you should just pack it up, mama, <laughs> and move out there and try to, you know, get to the audition. You'll get called for them and just go for it. I, I saw you, you have a great presence, and I feel like you need to just get out there and don't let go of this new, where are you from originally? New Jersey. Yeah, don't let that New Jersey. Do not let this New Jersey stuff go because I promise you, you get out there and people start to tell you one thing, and then we'll be like, are you that girl from New Jersey or are you from California? Jersey. Not that it's bad, but I'm from California too. But I know when someone's been like morphed into something yeah. else. And then, what was your second question? What do I have coming up? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm also working with a girl named Priyanka Chopra. She's from uh, India. She's gorgeous. Her name, she was like Miss World. Oh, but now she's breaking into pop music. I have another young act named Zach Montana that I'm working with. And I also work with, you know Carmen? The group Carmen? Yes. I work with Carmen and um, and they have some videos and stuff about to happen. So yeah. There's other things floating and I have a yeah, young a young kid named Zach that's really good. He's looking at that. So yeah, lots of things brewing. And then so I think cardio for everyone is, is a great approach to dance because it is about your stamina in the day. You have to execute, you have to perform, you have to change clothes. You have to go out there and be a character, but then you have to have the stamina to last at least for this tour, a two and a half hour show. Or for instance, the stamina will come 
you guys remember those iPod commercials back in the way of early with like all the silhouettes yeah. and the posters everywhere? Mm -hmm. Well, I've done, you know, I did two of those commercials and I was also a silhouette. But those moments were one of the most stressful moments as far as stamina because what happens is that you get the job after auditioning between, I'm talking about thousands of kids, thousands and thousands of kids looking for that right look. You have to hold an iPod, they want to see how you hold it, how you show it, but not show it. And then once you get it, the commercials and the photo sheet were basically me and an entire audience of whether it was Mac, Apple, whoever was involved in building the iPod back then. You had about this many people watching one person freestyle for three and a half minutes. And when you were done and it was told for us, they either clapped, woo, ah! or it was just like, <laughs> and when those people got crickets, they didn't make the commercial or they didn't make the, the spot. So what I'm saying is that in that moment, I, for me, that was a major stamina lesson because three and a half minutes of you by yourself against the green screen with this many eyes watching you and judging you and laptops and everything in, the, in your face, you're like, oh my gosh. So definitely, it's definitely about the stamina. Boys, I wouldn't get too big. Work out, but I wouldn't go for like, Watch the muscle game, of course I get it. No matter what you're into, body's body, muscle, muscle, it's hot, I get it. But as a dancer, it can sometimes look weird. And then what happens is you're gonna end up typecasting yourself. There's only gonna be those kind of like hot boy or body jobs that you'll be allowed to do because dancers are more lean and the lines are cleaner when they're a little more leaner. When you get too big, it's just gonna look weird. Girls, definitely, yeah. Definitely work out, but again, watch it. Watch the muscly part of it. As a dancer, it's more about the limberness and the lines. When we start seeing bloop, 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 it just gets like, ugh. Maybe for an aerobics workout video. Because you can you can feel an aerobics girl come in. How she walks, how she dresses, how she executes. It's very like aerobics workout. So I just wouldn't work, I would work out, but just make sure you're not building too much muscle. Okay? All right, anyone else? Yes. I was just wondering what everyone's favorite is. Ooh, good question. <laughs> Mine, um, oh wow, I would say for me it was number 11. Um, that one, that one was, yeah, it was If you really like the detail, the color, the physicality, the strength, how long it was, the motorcycle, the motorcycle, and the whole show, like everything, the concept, I would say, have done. 